coordinating schedules, grappling with different parenting styles, communicating effectively. Co-parenting can be challenging. Want some tips for effective co-parenting? Continue watching to find out. Hi, I'm Kim Feeney with Butterfly Beginnings Counseling and welcome to my channel. I have 10 years of experience as a play therapist, helping children and families lead healthier emotional lives. If this is something you are interested in for your child or family, subscribe and hit the bell for weekly notifications on the latest content. Before we jump into the tips, let's start by defining what exactly is co-parenting. Co-parenting refers to the act of two parents raising a child or children, even though they are no longer romantically involved. Both parents work together to ensure the child has a safe, loving environment to grow up in. And in an ideal situation, communication lines between parents are kept as open as possible. Above all, when co-parenting, it is vital and important to place the needs of your child or children first. Unless your family has faced serious issues, such as domestic violence, child abuse, or substance use. Co-parenting, having both parents play an active role in their children's daily lives is the best way to ensure that your kids' or needs are met and enable them to retain close relationships with both parents. Making shared decisions, interacting with each other at drop-offs, or just speaking to a person you'd rather forget all about can seem like an impossible task. However, for the sake of your kids' well-being, it is possible for you to overcome co-parenting challenges and even develop a cordial working relationship with your ex. The key to successful co-parenting is to separate the personal relationship with your ex from the co-parenting relationship. It may be helpful to start thinking of your relationship with your ex as a whole completely new one, one that is entirely about the well-being of your child and not about either of you. Throughout my years as a play therapist, I have helped children to cope with many divorce situations. I have discovered kids whose divorced parents have a cooperative relationship feel more secure. When confident with the love of both parents, kids adjust more quickly and easily to the divorce and the new living situation. The children benefit from consistency. Co-parenting fosters similar rules, discipline, and rewards between the two households. So children know what to expect and what's expected of them. This helps kids to better understand the problem solving and children who see their parents continuing to work together are more likely to learn how to effectively and peacefully solve problems. By giving them a healthy example to follow, cooperating with the other parent, you are establishing a life pattern your children can carry into the future to build and maintain stronger relationships. Helping your children to become mentally and emotionally healthier. Children exposed to conflict between co-parents are unfortunately more likely to develop issues such as depression, anxiety, or ADHD. All right, our first co-parenting tip, setting aside hurt and anger. As I teach all the parents of my play therapy clients, as well as the clients themselves, all feelings are okay. It's how we respond to the feelings that cause problems and issues. It's okay to be hurt and angry, but your feelings do not have to dictate your behavior. Instead, let what's best for your kids, you and your ex working cooperatively, motivate your actions. Get your feelings out somewhere else. Talk to your mom, your best friend, or even a therapist to work through the negative complex emotions concerning your former partner. This will allow you to stay kid-focused when you interact with your ex in the future. Drop me a comment below and let me know who that special person is in your life that you can confide in. And if you're looking for a group who may understand, consider joining our private Facebook group for calm, empathetic, supportive parents and caregivers. The link is below in the description. By setting that hurt and anger aside, you will show that you love your child more than you hate the other parent. You may not have the greatest dynamic with your ex and you may harbor negative feelings towards them. But let this phrase be your mantra. I love my child more than I hate the other parent. Keep repeating it to yourself whenever you feel like lashing out. You must be able to identify what your child's needs are and then help support the other parent in getting those met. The parental breakup is not what the child should be focusing on. Shine that spotlight on your child or children's needs. And this extends beyond their emotional life. It's pivotal for both parties to work together 
to understand and promote the kids' educational, social, and activity needs. Tip number two, be consistent, respectful, and kind. Establish your ground rules for co-parenting. When co-parents create a joint agreement as to items such as bedtime, social rules, or phone and computer use, the kids know their parents have a united front still. This gives children a great deal of safety and stability because they know that no matter what parent they are with, the rules will continue to be the same. The rules don't have to be exactly the same between the two households. However, if you and your ex-spouse establish generally consistent guidelines, your kids won't have to bounce back and forth like a ping pong ball between two radically different disciplinary environments. And speaking of discipline, try to follow similar systems of consequences for broken rules, even if the infraction didn't happen under your roof. For example, your kids have lost TV privileges while at your ex's house. Follow through with this restriction at your house. Use a similar system for rewarding positive behaviors as well. In addition, when you can, Strive for consistency in your children's schedules and routine. Making meals, homework, and bedtime similar can go a long way towards your child's adjustment to having two different homes. Tip number three, use a website or app to communicate more effectively. To ensure positive results as co-parents, keep a shared family calendar online that can be accessed by both parents and the child if appropriate. This type of calendar allows everyone to keep abreast of school, social, medical appointments, and sports schedules. Comment below with some of your favorite calendar apps to use. This communication all begins with mindset. Think about communication with your ex as having the highest purpose, your child's well-being. Make requests. Instead of making statements, which can be misinterpreted as demands, try framing as much as you can as a request. And then listen. Communicating with maturity starts with listening to the other person. And then finally in this tip, keep talking. If you disagree about something important, you will need to continue to communicate and never discuss your differences of opinion with or in front of your child. This leads me into tip number four. Have a brief monthly parental team meeting. Regular check-ins foster solid communication skills and can also help you nip any budding issues from the outset. Keep the meeting focused on your youngster or youngsters, well-being, and set a time limit of 30 minutes or less. During these meetings, the focus needs to be on the business of parenting. Be prepared to approach all interactions as a business transaction. Schedule a time to meet or discuss co-parenting concerns. It may also be helpful to find a neutral meeting place in public for difficult discussions. During the conversation, focus only on the decisions at hand. And remember, you don't have to agree on everything. It is not important for the child to experience parents that agree on everything, but instead, parents that are able to communicate their differences and opinions in a healthy manner. Accepting the co-parent is still your child's parent is tip number five. Remember, your child or children can still, and ideally will, have a loving, healthy relationship with the other parent post-separation. Their relationship should be allowed to develop in a new way and not merely be a reflection of your feelings. One way to ensure this happens is to avoid making your child the intermediary. Do not expect the children to be the messenger or the go-between. This is true for things such as logistics and also for making comments about the other parents. Never use kids as messengers. Keep your issues to yourself Never say negative things about your ex to your children or make them feel like they have to choose. And finally, our sixth tip includes ways to make transitions and visitations easier on the kids. The actual move back and forth from one household to another, whether it happens every few days or just on certain weekends, can be a very hard time for children. Every reunion with one parent is also a separation from the other. Every hello is also a goodbye. While transitions are unavoidable, there are many things you can do to help make them easier on your children. As kids prepare to leave your house for your exes, try to stay positive and deliver them on time. Help children anticipate the change. Remind kids they'll be leaving for the other parent's house a day or two before the visit occurs. Pack in advance. Depending on their age, help children pack their bags well before they leave so they don't forget anything that they'll miss. Encourage packing familiar reminders like a special stuffed toy or a photograph. Always drop off. Never pick up the child. 
It's a good idea to avoid taking your child from the other parent so that you don't risk interrupting or curtailing a special moment. Drop off your child at the other parent's house instead. The beginning of your child's return to your home can be awkward or even rocky. To help your child adjust, keep things low key. When the child first enters your home, try to have some downtime together. Read a book or do some other quiet activity. Becky Bailey's book, I Love You Rituals, has some fantastic ideas for this. Double up to make packing simpler and make kids feel more comfortable when they are at the other parent's house. Have kids keep certain basics like toothbrush, hairbrushes, pajamas at both houses. Allow your child some space. Children often need a little time to adjust to the transition. If they seem to need some space, do something else that's nearby, and then in time, things will get back to normal. Establish a special routine. Play a game or serve the same special meal every time your child returns to your home. Kids thrive on routine. If they know exactly what to expect when they return to you, it can help the transition run smoother. Separation, divorce, transitions are all challenging for everyone involved. Utilizing the six tips in this video will help to decrease the struggles for the children. Don't forget to join our Facebook group for calm, empathetic, supportive parents and caregivers using the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thank you for watching. On the screen are some other videos you may enjoy. Hug your child and make it a great day.